Hey friend, welcome to the Badass is the New Black podcast, where our motto is done is better than perfect. I'm Chrissy Chin, here on a mission to help you grow your business online, turn your leads into lifelong customers, and scale to six figures and beyond so you can work less and enjoy and earn a whole lot more. Most importantly, I'm a laid back wife, a mom, a friend who started as a peds nurse, turned network marketer, and now a serial entrepreneur. This podcast is for ambitious people with an idea, a vision, but no idea how to get there. On this podcast, I'll give actionable steps to keep you moving forward while you learn new business strategies, better systems and processes, marketing, sales, all the things you need to build and scale a blissful business that keeps your pocketbooks growing. Grab a beverage, open up your notes app, and let's get to it. Hey, hey, welcome back to the Badass is the New Black podcast. I'm your host, Chrissy Chin. Today, we're gonna talk about analytics. And I'm gonna go through kind of an extensive list of analytics. And then what I wanna ask from you is reach out, either if you're watching on YouTube, put it in the chat below, or if you're listening to the podcast, you can find me on Instagram and DM me, the Chrissy Chin underscore, and let me know which ones you want me to dive deeper into, and I'll do podcasts in the future that really kind of dive into this. I'll also find experts where we can talk about some of these areas in a little bit more depth. But today we're gonna keep it short and sweet, and I'm just gonna kind of run through a list of about 20 uh, analytics that you can and should be keeping track of in your business. So when you're not keeping track of the analytics, the different numbers in your business, things can start to take a turn for the worse and they can get a lot worse without you really realizing it. But when you are looking at the numbers, when you're paying attention, then you can make strategic decisions on how to turn things around, or maybe you're doing well, and you can just use that data to go even further. And this was one thing that I struggled with a little bit in my business as not a, I like numbers, but I'm not like a natural numbers person where I wanna dive in, I want to have fun, I want to um, do the strategy, but sometimes I don't wanna take the time to really go back and dissect and look deeply and follow the numbers, and sometimes they might be telling you something that you don't want to hear. And so I'm even guilty of kind of putting on those blinders at times and just ignoring it and then being a little bit bummed when I realized, oh, I could have turned this around a little bit quicker. And um, one of my favorite authors, Melissa Houston with Cash Confident, kind of reminded me of this in her book that the numbers don't lie. And instead of kind of avoiding the numbers, you Use the numbers as your friend and if at any point in time you make a mistake and something happens and maybe revenue drops you're not a bad person you're not a bad business owner but this is an opportunity to learn and to grow and to move forward so without further ado let's go ahead and dive in so enrollment rate enrollment rate in the percent and the idea that uh, looking at the percent of people who are visitors that are coming to your website and then enroll in your online courses. So diving into that. And we'll, we'll mention website a few times. So using Google Analytics to be able to um, keep up with the data a little bit easier and more automated. Conversion rates. So the percentage of people who sign up for your email list and then end up joining your offer, buying your products, enrolling in your course, joining your program, becoming a VIP client. Those are things to be taking a note of, uh, not only to kind of have an idea of what the conversion rate is, but based on those rates, you can make improvements and adjust accordingly to get those rates to increase. And I'm not gonna spit off a specific number because for every industry it's different, but it, it you would be surprised, it can be a quite low rate for your conversions, to enroll. So when it comes to sales, it's a numbers game and really reaching a wide audience is really important. Number three is the churn rate. So the rate at which your clients, your customers, your students drop out or cancel their subscription. So this is something really important to keep in mind if you have a membership or a subscription model business or offer, be paying attention to the churn rate. Uh, you know, when are they 
unsubscribing or um, canceling. So like how long into their subscription and what is the rate at which they're happening? Something very important to be keeping an eye on to be able to predict future earnings and to be able to make improvements to try and decrease the churn rate. So you really do want a low churn rate. For a long time, we only had a churn rate of like 3%, which is great. I think that's gone up a bit, but having a low rate is very good. Four, average completion time of maybe your course or your offer. This is important to keep track of and know. Also, number five is the course completion rate. So knowing how many people are actually completing your offer and then having an idea of how long it's taking them to complete. This will help you set better expectations for your incoming students by letting them know, you know, our average student takes X amount of time to complete this, two hours to complete it, two weeks, two months, a whole year, that helps set the expectations for people so that they can make the time and the space to complete your offer. And then how many people are actually completing it? It's super important to know if the completion rate is in the tubes, <laughs> not very good, then what can you do to help increase? Um, and you can send out surveys to get more information from your students to find out why they're not completing it and maybe help um, implement resources and things like that to help them. So we have implemented, you know, as we go through and take a look at, um, you know, our smaller courses or build a blissful business, you know, we're constantly looking at, all right, well, how can we improve this to help you not only complete this, but complete complete this faster. And whether it's adding in more easy to use templates or the recent add-in to build a blissful business was a checklist, step-by-step -step checklist. Literally, here is what you do this week. Everything is hyperlinked to get them to go directly to what it is. Um, number six, something to be paying attention to is revenue per student. This again helps you with projections in the future. So knowing the average amount of revenue generated per student. Hopefully over time, maybe you're just starting out and you have one offer, but over time, I'm hoping that you're building out a strategic product suite where you have more things to offer your customers. Or if you're in direct sales, of course you have a maybe a vast array from your product lines. And so really what is that average per customer or per student? Again, to kind of help you get an idea of when you do bring in a student, how much can you expect to generate from them? And that helps lead us to number seven, which is cost per acquisition. So the cost incurred, acquired, the cost you, whatever, I don't know what the word is, the cost that it's costing you, <laughs> the amount that it's costing you to acquire a new student. This is super important to know, especially if you're going to invest in paid advertising, because it's really important to kind of know, okay, how much is it gonna cost me to bring in a new customer? And then if you have the analytics from number six, revenue per student, you know how much you're going to make. So if your average revenue per student is $50 and it's costing you $60 to acquire that new person, that is a loss. We need to adjust something, figure out how to acquire them for less money or how to increase your revenue per student. Another analytic to keep an eye on is the return on your investment on whatever it is that you're doing, right? So that's the ratio of revenue generated to the cost of creating and maybe marketing the course. So let's do it specifically on, you know, anything that's involved with um, creating and marketing the course, what's the return on your investment? So always just great to have an idea of when you're investing in something, whether it's a service, a, um, you know, I don't know, a template or something, thinking about the return on your investment. So for example, our sales page template from our template shop that literally helps you create a sales page in less than a day, the return on your investment is gonna be pretty high on that. Of course, depending on what the cost of your offer is and whatnot. But the idea with that one is that you're gonna have a high return on your investment because the sales page is going to help you sell a lot more. So that's worth investing in. But anyway, having an idea of just the return on your investment on the things that you're investing in. Number nine, customer lifetime value. That's often abbreviated as CLTV. So that's the predicted revenue a student will generate over their lifetime as a customer. Again, this helps you uh, predict, you know, what your future earnings will be or helps you set goals for your quarters or your year. If you have a revenue goal and you know what the average uh, customer lifetime value is, you can kind of set your goals based on that. 
Number 10, your refund, 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 <laughs> can't say that word, rate. So the percentage of students who are requesting a refund, I hope this rate is low, but if you find yourself in a pickle where a lot of people are asking for a refund, this is important to note because you can get some more information, find out why they're asking for a refund and make improvements on your offer or uh, maybe you change your refund policy actually. So we had a refund policy money back guarantee for Build a Blissful Business and we didn't have a high percent of people asking for it, but we realized that with our refund policy, which was a money back guarantee, we did attract people that were kind of starting with one foot in and one foot out already. And that's not the kind of people that we want to attract. We want to attract people who are in this. They are committed. They're taking their business serious. They really want to get it online set up and automated. And so we changed our guarantee to a um, not a money back guarantee, but a done for you services. Um, so that if they realized after a certain period of time that they could not actually do the work or didn't have the time, they can convert that into a done for you credit because at the end of the day, they really want to get it set up and completed. And so shifting that, we've seen just a very different um, you know, student that has come in, which has been really exciting and no refund requests at this time. So we'll keep you posted on that. Number 11, your engagement rate. So the level of student engagement with uh, maybe your content. This could be, you could do these different um, analytics for, you could do level of engagement with your course material. You could do level of engagement with your social media or some of your freebies or funnels. So these, there's different areas where you can be looking at engagement, but it is important to note because uh, if the engagement is low, a lot of times people won't be doing the work and the success won't be there. And we want your students and your clients and your customers to be successful with what they're doing. Number 12, social media reach. Another thing to just be keeping an eye on, the number of people reach through social media platforms and how much reach based on different platforms because you may not want to be on 10 different platforms. And so figuring out what is the platform for you, how is my reach on these different platforms that you're playing around with, and maybe you take those analytics and you decide, okay, I'm just focusing on Instagram and I'm not gonna worry about the rest, or I'm just focusing on YouTube and all of that. Number 13, email open rates. If you're not looking at your email open rates, then we can't be friends. No, I'm just kidding. This is the time to change that and be taking a look at your open rates. The percentage of people who are opening your marketing emails. Now I would say kind of on the lower end and in industry standard would be like 15, 20% good is 30%, 40%, high is 60%. And of course it kind of depends, you know, if you have a freebie and someone opts into your freebie, that very next email that sends them the freebie, you should have a very high open rate on that, um, you know, 70%, 80% if it's not 100, which it probably won't be 100, but also because just side note that some people do open emails, but it the analytics tracker on, you know, like we use Kajabi, sometimes doesn't trigger or show that's an open rate. There are certain email platforms that someone could hover over an email and it can like open and read, but it doesn't tell the platform that this was actually open. So good news is your open rate might actually be higher. So be shooting for those high numbers. If people are not opening your email, then you can take some new action. Maybe the subject line needs some support um, and getting it to be more enticing. So in, in a funnel, again, taking this next level, this could be a whole other podcast episode and, and fine tuning your funnel, but the percentage rate can typically drop off a little bit as your funnel moves on and on. So if you are able to make adjustments to kind of keep that open rate high in your funnel, then you're doing a really great job. Number 14, click-through rate, often referred to as your CTR. This is the percentage of recipients who are clicking on links. Now, uh, oftentimes people are looking at click-through rates in emails. So if you have links in your emails, who's actually clicking on it, right? That's an important stat to keep track of when you're doing a sales funnel. If everyone's opening your emails but no one's clicking on your sales page, then there's a problem probably with the messaging in there. So you can make adjustments. Also important to note through when you're running paid advertising, you know, what's that click-through rate on your ads to see like people are seeing it, are they actually clicking through? 
15 landing page conversion rate. So the percentage of visitors who are taking the desired action on your landing page, um, you know, so opting into your freebie. If you have a ton of people visiting your landing page and people aren't opting in, then it's likely that your messaging on um, or your design on your web page needs to be addressed. And so that's where through our template shop, when we have like we have landing page opt in pages for um, things like printables, and then we have a different opt in page for a masterclass or a webinar, we're very strategic when we give you that copy um, template to follow, there's a strategy behind it. There's intention behind what we're having you put on the page and where it is. It's all built into the design. So when you use our templates, um, hopefully you're starting with a higher conversion rate than just starting from scratch and doing a lot of things wrong that people miss. But again, important to take note of and be paying attention to um, is the conversion rate on your landing pages. 16, traffic sources. So the channels through which visitors find your website. So how are they finding your website? Through organic search, through social media, through referrals. And so having your Google Analytics hooked up and a dashboard for you to review to kind of see like where are people coming from? Again, that helps you really get focused and double down. Okay, tons of people are coming from Pinterest. I'm gonna double down my efforts there. Maybe I'm gonna do some paid ads there. Maybe I'm gonna bump up my pin there, um, you know, or YouTube. Okay, great. Got to do more YouTube videos. So just having an idea of where people are coming from can either help you double down on that area and increase traffic or help you focus on the areas that are a little bit weaker. 17, the bounce rate. So the percentage of visitors who, this could be actually be two different things. So the bounce rate for um, coming to your website and just leaving after only viewing one page. So maybe that tells you that your website copy needs some support. Maybe the design isn't very um, helpful. Maybe it's confusing. You've got too many call to actions, not, not enough call to actions on there. And then also when I think, when I thought of bounce rate originally, when I thought of this, um, I was thinking about the, like email open bounce rate. Number 19, course ratings, or you can think of this as reviews and testimonials. So monitoring that, are people putting leaving reviews? Are they leaving reviews on your podcast? Are they leaving reviews on your course? Do they have testimonials for you? Uh, sometimes you have to ask for these. So paying attention to if they're coming in organically, great. If not, you're gonna have to put in a little effort to get this. Ask for the review, ask for the testimonial, and this will help you, you know, gauge the quality and effectiveness of whatever it is that you're putting out there. And it also is a great way to use social, um, social proof that other people are experiencing wonderful things from what you have to offer. So people love reading reviews. They love testimonials. Uh, there's a reason Yelp exists. Number 20 is your competitor analysis. So offering um, based on their offerings, their prices, their marketing, their strategies, and even customer feedback so that you can stay competitive in the market. So there we just covered 20 analytics for your business. Now they were in no particular order. Don't want you to get overwhelmed with this list of 20. Check out the show notes or um, you can go look at the blog post on this and just pick three that you have not been doing and want to start incorporating into your weekly check-in. So we um, check in on opt-ins, how many people are opting in. So that might be a good one to do along with the percentage of people that are converting on your landing page. So maybe, maybe those are a couple numbers that you look at every single week now moving forward. Um, maybe you are looking at your conversion rate, how many people from your funnels are actually converting and maybe your click-through rate on your emails. Those are going to be some great signs um, to be following and watching and being able to make adjustments to improve your strategy behind them so that you can increase those numbers and sell more on autopilot. That's it for this week. Short and sweet. Again, comment on the YouTube video or send me a message on Instagram and let me know which one of these you would like to dive in deeper. I have also some experts that I want to want to bring into our Ask uh, access to the experts series that's happening. One expert we're bringing in a month and you get to come uh, live for free 
to learn from them. And I already have a couple lined up that are going to kind of tackle some of these things and help you improve on your numbers here based on just some of these analytics. So again, would love to know which one you wanna hear more about, and I will work on finding the experts or doing more deep dive trainings on these topics. For now, have a wonderful week, and remember to take imperfect action. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you got some value out of this episode, I would love some support. And the best way to do that so I can keep showering you with loads of actionable tips is to hit that subscribe button, leave a review or a comment if you're on YouTube and share this podcast with a friend. And when you share it with a friend on social, please tag me so I can reshare your share in my stories. It's been an absolute pleasure hanging out. I appreciate the heck out of you for showing up. And now it's time for you to take imperfect action so you can work less and enjoy and earn a whole lot more.